Welcome to Snapshot, I'm Mike Jones. The public safety levy has been successfully placed on the November ballot. So I thought it would be instructive to take a look back at the 2015 May levy to get an idea what we might look forward to in the coming weeks. After the levy campaign announcement in January of 2015, Bill Hunker arrived on the scene with what I think was the magic bullet that widened the gap of levy defeat over the previous years. That means that in every thousand people in the city, 175 have stories. Out in the county for every 1,000, only 25 have stories. Right. The cost-benefit analysis for somebody who doesn't hear much about much crime, they're comfortable. They haven't, they haven't personally experienced you know what? Bill's got his finger on it. That's clarity right there. There was a couple of surprises, and one is that uh, the property crimes and grants pass, I have to hand it to them, from their high in 1995, they are down 49% in property crimes over that period of time, which I think is, is terrific. In 2002 and 2011 are identical. 2003 and 2012 are o only one point off per thousand. Right. And so they must have started way back there to say, oh, I'm not going to re uh, report crime anymore. And then evidently they decided to re start reporting again in four and five. And then they said, no, we won't report anymore. I mean, it's, it's illogical. This turned the strategy focus of the pro-levy campaign almost entirely to people's perceptions and emotional appeals. Sometimes we get caught up too much in some of the numbers. And, and I know numbers are important. Um, you know, sometimes you have to go with, with your gut. I think many people believe that perception is reality. And when you talk about public safety, I think that's even more relevant. When bad things happen, the police get notified. The sheriff's office responds. You know, we're only right now working a certain amount of hours a day, so we're not always there. Um, that saddens me, and, and that's, that's unfortunate. And I would uh, do just about anything I could to try and make that not be. People say no new taxes. Well, how does, how does no new taxes stop the drunk driver from killing your family? Because there's nobody out there to stop them. You know, how does, how, does, how does the no new taxes stop the sexual assault or the domestic violence or the burglary or the theft or the criminal mischief? How do no new taxes address that issue? We see when other people are sleeping in their beds at night, we see what's happening in our community and the degradation that this behavior of these street thugs and those people have come here with the sole purpose of creating hate and discontent and taking advantage of the generosity of our community is offensive to me. Once they get, uh, gain a foothold, it'll only get worse. And let's use uh, ISIS as an example here, how uh, our right. president... The labeled them JV, and guess what? They made varsity. They even attempted to use biblical authority to influence people, stating that if you do not obey government, it is akin to Satan worship. In our country, we've taken this right that we have to free speech, we've taken it to unbelievable levels. We openly criticize our leaders in this country, in, you know, in, in our county. Uh, we, we pretty much... We, we, we pretty much criticize anything that we don't agree with. Well, yeah. And I just need to say this, that it's really painful for me to watch when I see people that, that just can't honor authority. It's just painful to, to watch people who are rebellious by nature. Jesus paid his taxes, so, so should we. And be good citizens. Children obey your parents. Players obey the coaches. Citizens obey police and government leaders. Christians obey spiritual leaders. Yes to all of these. And we need to see rebellion for what it really is. First Samuel 15, 23. Rebellion is like the sin of divination. Satan worship. And arrogance like the evil of idolatry. So that's what rebellion is. It's like Satan worship. And we just need to understand how how hurtful it is, how dangerous it is. That didn't go over very well, did it? Right at the end of this sermon, which lasted about 20 minutes, in which they stated over and over the virtues of submitting to authority, they played a video featuring the ranking local authority figures exhorting the parishioners to vote for the levy. 
The Apostle Paul in Romans 13, verses 1 through 7, talks about our relationship to these men. I won't read the whole passage, but just a couple of verses. It says, Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that for which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. It says they are God's servants. They are agents of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Therefore, it is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of possible punishment, and we don't want to be the one that gets arrested, but also as a matter of conscience. This is why you pay taxes, for the authorities are God's servants who give their full time to governing. So give to everyone what you owe. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. Will the levy campaign stick with the same strategy? I have heard the SOS is working on statistics that quantify the level of unreported crime, which of course is to combat the Oregon State Police crime stats that the anti-levy folks have used so effectively. Is there anything more in the pro-levy toolbox? We'll all find out together. If you like this video, give us a click of the like button. Click subscribe to follow future videos. More to come as news breaks.